I'm going to show you how I install this wiring harness for any time diff lock from Outback Diesel Tuning. Let's get into it. First thing you're going to want to do is disconnect the switch from the rest of the loom because you don't need that yet. So just push on the clip and pull it apart and then you can put that to the side for later. This is the way that I like to install it. Uh, make sure you follow the instructions that come with the harness uh, and only use the diff lock when you're going at slow speeds, engaging it only when you're either at a stop or slow speeds and just be aware that you at your own risk. So the first thing you should do is disconnect your battery. Once you disconnect your battery, you should leave it for about a minute or two, just so that way any capacitors that are in the system will have time to discharge. So start by disconnecting your battery. Once you've disconnected your battery, you're then gonna to wanna to remove your fuse box cover. Fuse box cover is removed. You're then gonna to wanna to locate this green plug. Once you've located this green plug, you're then gonna to wanna to remove it. Once that removed, get your harness and find the female end and plug that into your harness. Then get the other end and stick it in where you pulled out the green plug from. All right, now that's connected, what I'm going to do is connect up my neutral. I'm going to be connecting this up to my washer bottle bolt but you can choose a suitable location for where you're connecting the negative. Once you have the negative attached you're then going to want to attach your active wire. So this provides a feed to the relays which activates the harness. So I'm using my ignition fuse to do this because I'm only going to be engaging the anytime diff lock while the car is running. So remove your 10 amp ignition fuse, then install the piggyback fuse holder. Now that you have it installed, it's time to tidy up the loom. All right, once you have the fuse box cover back on and everything's tidied up, it's now time to run the switch cable through the firewall. I'm gonna go through this grommet in the firewall. I'm going to put a small slice in it feed the cable through and then put a bit of sealant over the top so there's no water ingress. I suggest that you put a bit of sealant on uh, of your choice that is suitable for the application. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now I've run the cable through and cable tied it to the fuel filter housing. I'm now gonna go inside the car and connect up the switch. Let's go do that. So what you want to do now is get the switch and remove it from the, the wiring. Once that's removed, we're now going to get a trim removal tool and we're going to pop up the trim. Work your way around and just pop it up. Once it's free moving, we're now going to want to remove a blank. So we'll just remove a blank now. This one's fairly easy because I removed it earlier. Once I've removed that, I'm now going to place the new switch in with the light at the bottom, well, facing towards the bottom. Once that switch is pressed in, I'm now going to connect the harness. Once that's connected in, I'm now going to feed the lead down into the footwell where I've run the cable from the engine bay through the grommet through the firewall. There is one screw you may want to remove to make it easier to feed the cable through. Now that we've run the cabling, we're going to connect it up. We don't want to push the trim down yet because we want to test it before we secure everything up. So what we're going to do is connect out the outside cable to the inside cable now that I have that connected, I'm going to start my engine and make sure that the light illuminates on the switch so that way I know the switch is working and then I can uh, push the trim back into place. 
I'm now starting my engine. I'm now going to test to make sure that this illuminates. Now that I can see that the switch illuminates, I can turn the engine off and I can put all the trim into place and now take it for a test drive. So now I'm test driving. It takes a little while for it to engage. So I'm pressing the button now. Now I'm taking off. So that engaged fairly quickly, but it can take up to 50 meters for it to engage. But that's what you should see. Once it's engaged, now I'll now disengage. And it goes off fairly quickly. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can with an answer. I hope this video helps.